Hey guys, I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. We're two lifelong friends and musicians, but when we're not playing gigs, we like to talk games. And today on the Gaming Gig Podcast, we're talking about how to game on a budget. All right, Daniel, gaming can be super, super expensive, especially if you like to keep up with the games that are coming out right now. And you know, if you have that FOMO and you wanna play the games, Gaming get really expensive. Yeah, getting in on day one is not a uh, not a poor man's endeavor. No, I mean that's for sure. And it used to be that retro gaming was you know cheaper, but now retro gaming is pretty much just as expensive as like playing new games. Oh yeah, retro gaming has uh, kind of freaked out. Yeah. It, <laughs> so because of all that, gaming on a budget is something that I do, and I think you do as well. I do. I realized when I was preparing for this podcast that. I do so many things to try to reduce the amount of money I spend on video games while also getting to play a lot of video games. Yeah, for sure. So we've come up with a list of things that we're going to talk about, some different ways. And today we're going to talk about the main ways to game on a budget. You know, what are the the things that pretty much anyone can do and what is available to you? Yeah. Let's jump into it. So um, one of the best ways to game on a budget is probably just wait until the game goes on sale. I hear, you know, people talk about how games are so expensive, but one of the things that people don't talk about a lot is that if you just wait a few months, that game that was $70 is no longer $70. But Randy, I want to play at launch. I have FOMO. (laughs) Well, I understand that. Well, I, I know that you actually don't do that because you rarely play at launch. I do not have fun. But I know you're playing a character there. I am playing a character. It was a bit. <laughs> it was a bit. <laughs> um, you're, you're, but you do, you're kind of touching on something that's important, and that's that waiting for a sale is not good for someone who wants to play something day one. So this tactic of saving money is if you like to play games day one, waiting for a sale just isn't going to work for you. No, but I will say there's something here in our outline uh, – that really speaks to me in that uh, sometimes those day one games are buggy AF. Oh, yeah. So like, Super, super buggy. I mean, honestly, you can kind of avoid some heartache there. Like, like I jumped on Elden Ring pretty early, but I, I did it on PC. Right. Because I just had gotten my PC and I was all about it. And uh, the PC port was really buggy. And it definitely uh, hindered my experience. Yeah. I could tell the game was great, but the bugs got in the way. Yeah, and that's like super common across a lot of day one releases, right? Mm -hmm. They come out buggy. But then also, another thing to think about, one of the reasons you might want to wait anyway, is that sometimes a brand new game like hasn't been proven. Like it may be something Mm -hmm. that's really hyped up and seems like it could be great. But until people have been playing it and kind of gathered up. No Man's Sky. Oh, sorry. No Man's Sky. That's a great example. But until people have really Mm -hmm. gathered their thoughts and really come to a conclusion of exactly how good the game is, you know, it takes a little while for those opinions to be made, for sure. It does. And, but you also don't want to just, like, let the internet make you feel a certain way about a game. So that's a delicate balance. There's a tightrope there that you have to walk. Absolutely. You know, because yeah. the internet, if they decide that game sucks, then you're going to go into it potentially thinking it sucks. And it might be The Last of Us Part Two. Right. You know, like, or it, it could be a situation where it's truly awesome. and Or just in the fact that, you know, not all games are for everybody. Or you could be one of those people who, even though a lot of people dislike a game, you may love that game. That's right. You know, just because other people dislike it doesn't mean that you're not going to like it. Mm -hmm. Um, But still, I think those are some good reasons that you might want to wait. And if you're okay waiting, know that most games do go on sale. uh, Eventually. Most of them. With the exception of being primarily Nintendo first party games. Yeah, those suckers never go on sale. No. They know what they've got. They, well, and that's kind of the Nintendo way is they hold they hold the value of their games whether or not, you know, people mm-hmm. are buying them. And by doing that, Nintendo products have, for whatever reason, they have a premium feel to them because you know that you're paying the, the full price always for them. Yep, absolutely. I mean, they, like I said, they know what they have, you know, they, and, and even if... Even if what they have isn't what they think they have, they make us feel like it is. Right. If that made sense. And it encourages people to buy it day one because they know that it's not going to go on sale. So if I'm going to buy it, I might as well go in day one. That's true. And I, when I think about it, Nintendo games are some of those games I do go day one on more often, I would say. Probably. There's some psychology at play there for sure. Yeah. 
Definitely some psychology. But let's say someone is cool with waiting, mm-hmm. and they you know are expecting games to go on sale. Um, when are some good times, Daniel, to wait for a game? What what are your options there? Well, the first one that I think of is Prime Day because I've bought games on Prime Day before. I, we just had Prime Day not too long ago, and mm-hmm. I bought like at least three, four games. Yeah, um, I'm sure a lot of people probably think Black Friday. Yeah, Black Friday is one that I've done a number of times you know um especially like i've gone to our like local walmart and mm-hmm. i've seen games on black friday that you know just came out like a month or two before and now they're all the way down to like as low as like ten dollars i mean yeah. black friday sales can be really good and, and prime and, day sales can be really great yeah and walmart used to have like some better prices in general so that was definitely the place to go and don't they do like now isn't there like a uh, another like oh like uh cyber monday that's another thing that's right that after is, Black Friday. That is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, isn't there like a summer Black Friday thing that a lot of places do now? Maybe. Yeah. Is I it mean, a different color? <laughs> probably. It's white White Friday. I mean, it's the opposite of black, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, black is the absence of all color and white is the presence of The presence of all, of color. all color, yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. So. I was thinking like Golden Friday. Hmm. That would be. That would work. Platinum too. Friday. Use your platinum card, spend yeah, the money. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but also, you know, like uh, like Steam and the PlayStation Store, the Nintendo eShop, you know, the Xbox Store, all those places have periodic sales. And sometimes they can be really good. Yeah, I mean, the Nintendo eShop, now you're not going to get the first party games, but, but there's a lot more games on there. And they do go on sale quite a bit. And I have bought a lot of those games. Yeah. Um, I think I've got Cuphead on sale. I haven't even, and I'll, I'll buy them like in advance. Like if I know it's something I'm interested in and I know that's a great price, I'll just buy it. Mm-hmm. Like I did that with Cuphead. I did that with um, a number of indie games. Yeah. I did it with Civ Six. And we're t- we, you know, we're talking about like online, you know, the online shops, mm-hmm. but also like the brick and mortar stores often have really great sales. You know, like Best Buy will just occasionally run really great sales and they have, you know, I bought Man, I haven't bought a game at Best Buy in a long time now that you say that. I I often check Best Buy on the app because mm. they have really great sales occasionally and it's like mm. you can get games for, you know, crazy cheap. So, I think that definitely waiting for a sale is a viable option for gaming on budget. I don't think it's the best way. Because you one, you have to wait. You're leaving it up to fate. Yeah, and then you're just assuming that the game's going to go on sale. And yeah. like we said, Nintendo games aren't doing that. Mm-hmm. And also, PlayStation uh, with their first party titles are seems that they're adopting the mindset of keep it at the full price for yeah. its lifetime. Yay! Yay! Yes. <laughs> so that just makes <laughs> it a little bit harder to wait for a sale. Lucky us. But that's on you know, if you want a new copy of the game, which waiting for a sale, you know, does give you a new copy of the game, whether it be I mean digital, obviously, but mm-hmm. it's always gonna be new. But a physical yes. copy, waiting for a sale does give you that. So that's a pro, you know. You get a brand new sealed copy. And I do like some sealed copies. I do too. So I think that I think that waiting for a sale is if you can wait, it's a pretty good option. Definitely. So let us know what you guys think. So, Randy, another way of gaming on a budget that we've talked about quite a bit in our car rides to and from gigs is buying used games. Yes. Buying used games is basically become my way of life in terms of (laughs) I, it pains me to buy a brand new game now. Yeah. I almost, almost exclusively buy used games in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Although I do occasionally get those day one releases and those are new, but yeah. In the, in the past number of months, I can't think of the last time I bought a brand new game that was like day one release. Yeah. Why did I get brand new? Oh, I got Lava Live day one, brand new. Well. But that wasn't even full price. It wasn't a $60 game. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't a $60 game. Um, yeah, what we've talked about a lot is uh, we we got we both got pretty deep into the like chasing the deals on Facebook Marketplace, mm-hmm. especially with retro games. Yes. Because there's people that'll just throw up like lots of games. I don't mean like lots of games. I mean like a lot of, a, a group of games, a collection of games, a lot. That's what I'm trying to say here. Mm-hmm. Specifically like Game Boy games, things like that. And they won't realize that they have like a really valuable one in that lot, you know? Right. So you can definitely get some cool stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Like, I mean, 
I've even bought systems off. I think a lot of people don't think of Facebook Marketplace because they don't think like, oh, buying games on Facebook Marketplace. Who does that? I mean, everyone thinks of eBay, and mm-hmm. eBay is can be a really, really great resource. Mm-hmm. So, for, if you're looking for used games, you know, obviously eBay, but Facebook Marketplace is way uh, underutilized and can have some really, really great deals. Especially if you just check like your local, like what's around you locally, and see what people have like for pickup only that they're not trying mm-hmm. to sell. Yeah. And ship, they're just trying to get someone to come pick it up. That stuff can be a steal. Yeah, because you just take them for for everything they have when they don't realize what they've got. Yeah, you I know? mean, because they're just like lots of times they won't even have it listed. They'll just they'll have like a 3ds and they'll have it listed as Nintendo. Yeah, and that's like the only thing it says is it's a Nintendo, mm-hmm. and they, they don't know what they have. They just yeah. know they have some Nintendo. Yeah, and they'll be like, "Well, I've got these old, uh, I've got this copy of Pokemon Yellow too. You know, do you want that?" Oh yeah, and they'll throw it in for free. <laughs> or you know, like you said, these lots of games. Like I see all the time people who their kid you know, had an Xbox 360 and now the kids moved out and they've just got this huge pile of Xbox 360 games and it's like, you know, 50 games. And they're like, ah, I'll give, you know, 50 bucks for all of them. Yeah. And you're like, that's $1 a game and you get this whole library of Xbox 360 games. You know, yeah. that, I see that stuff all the time on mm-hmm. Facebook Marketplace. And you'll get the boxes and stuff too a lot of the time. And oh, that's yeah. like getting to be very valuable. So, you know, like we said, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, but then you do have GameStop, which mm-hmm. GameStop is super hit and miss when it comes to their used games. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've gone to GameStop and gotten great deals on used games, and I've also gone to GameStop thinking I was going to get a great deal on a used game, and it was only a couple dollars cheaper than new. Yeah, I've, I've been in that boat before, too. I've always, yeah, I always uh, you know, we used to check the 3DS case, mm-hmm. like the 3DS game case, and uh, we would always have price charting up and, you know, checking the, checking the prices. Uh, RIP to that. 3ds case by the way it's it's pretty much gone yeah at our local gamestop they've just completely gotten rid of it. they had this great case they what have the all crap. these 3ds and ds games and then now it's like for whatever reason they just aren't i, I don't know they got a few copies of like some pokemon games in there and then the rest of it is like these weird collectible coin things or cards or something i don't know a bunch of stupid stuff I, I talked to one of the workers there and he said that they just aren't getting the trade-ins yeah makes sense which i mean i think that 3DS, especially right now, has really gotten popular again, mm-hmm. and people are keeping or buying 3DS games, and they're not trading them in. I know yeah. I, I wouldn't trade in any of mine unless I have duplicates. You know? Yeah, no, definitely. And I especially wouldn't trade them in a GameStop because they don't give you a whole lot of money back for... Yeah, that's just like the, the layman's like, oh, I want to get rid of these games, take them to right. GameStop. Yeah. yeah, but GameStop can. Uh, it's I don't know how they decide how they're going to price things. I think it's got to be based on both demand and how new the game is. But sometimes they'll have games for really, really cheap used. You know, I bought Sea of Thieves for $5 used. That's a steal. And that game, I mean, it's older now because it came out, what, 2017? A great year. I don't know. I don't know. A heck of a year for games. It's a number of years old now anyways. (laughs) So, you know, some games like Sea of Thieves was super cheap. And I've seen, uh, oh, I bought... A, uh, one of those dark pictures anthology games for like also like five to ten bucks. You can do okay with GameStop, but in general, I'd say that it's very hit or miss there. You know, I recently tried to uh, pick up a used copy of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate from there, which also came out in 2018, and it was 54 freaking dollars. Well, it's a Nintendo game. Yeah. But you can, like, um, you could find a copy of like Smash Ultimate on Facebook Marketplace for way cheaper. Definitely. Yeah, than GameStop. But I mean, still, GameStop, GameStop is worth checking out for sure. Yeah. But also, um, garage sales. Mm. This is something that if you live in an area that is maybe not quite as rural as where we live, yeah. this is a much better option. Um, because you can check their websites where people list that they're having, you know, yard sales or garage sales, and you can see if they have video games listed in their description. And if they do, you can go check it out. And I know a lot mm. of people on YouTube especially yeah. do this. Oh, yeah. I love watching uh, Phoenix Resale is the channel that I always think of. And he he kills it at, like, everywhere. I mean, everywhere he goes, game stores, yard sales, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, around here, you know, you might be able to get lucky. But, you know, you're probably going to mainly find, like, Dale Earnhardt memorabilia and Dixie <laughs> Outfitter shirts. But uh, if that's your thing, then... Yeah, I mean, you never know, right? But I, I have I've only ever bought uh, 
I'm trying to think. Well, maybe a couple times. Um, but I, where we live, there aren't a whole lot of you mm-hmm. know yard sales, garage sale type things. No. But I have bought some games. I bought. I know for one sure I've bought one game in my life using these. But I know that a lot of people do this. It's just not very common where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but also a, a very underutilized source for used games is uh, the website Gamefly. So if you yeah. don't, yeah, if you don't know about Gamefly. Yeah, we both got into this pretty recently. We did a whole podcast about it, actually, where Randy convinced himself to subscribe. And it took me a little longer, but I did eventually also subscribe because it's a great deal. I mean, it's um, it's like $15 a month, and you can rent as many games as you want. But what we're talking about here with the buying used is that if you want to keep it, there is a keep price, and sometimes it's really good. Yeah, so you can keep you know, a game that you have rented and basically you're getting a used copy. But then on top of that, they also just have a used game store, Mm -hmm. like where they sell their used games online and their prices are almost always better than GameStops in terms of buying. And you don't have to be a member to purchase used games from them. You can just go on there and buy a used game and they'll ship it to your house. Just like if you bought it off Amazon or something. Um, And you'll get the box and all that. Yeah. So, you know, that is a really great source for buying used games. And if you're worried about like a rented game that's been passed around a lot, you know, looking really bad or being in bad shape, I have literally never gotten a Gamefly disc that even had one scratch on it. Mm-hmm. They're always pristine. Uh, for whatever reason, the people who are renting take really good care of it, or the Gamefly people are really good about not selling copies that are scratched. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Somehow, you, with their infrastructure, they do a really great job of making sure that all their discs are in really good shape. So Shout no, out to Gameflow. Yeah, not something to worry about. So, you know, if you can buy used games, you're often, you know, like my number that I try to hit always is $10. I know that seems super low, but that's like my... If you I can could, get it. If, you can do it. When I'm buying a used game, I try to shoot for $10 or less. And if it's a game that I really want, I might bump it up to say, okay, I'll spend 20 on that or whatever. But mm-hmm. that use, buying used games can be one of the absolute best ways to oh, game yeah. on a budget. Absolutely. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you thought about, everyone's thought about buying used games as an option. Most people have probably done it at GameStop at least once. Yeah. But it's something to not forget about. And it can be a really economical way to game on a budget for sure definitely all right so daniel i think that one of the most underutilized ways to game on a budget is renting video games because i think a lot of people don't even realize that you can rent video games anymore because you just about can't (laughs) (laughs) there is a way there is a way there is a way but you know, the days of cruising down to your local Blockbuster and picking up a couple of N64 games for the weekend is, uh, you know, gone the way of the Dodo. Yeah. And used to. That was the way we did it. That, that was the way. My parents, you know, only, you know, would, would only spend so much money on us for video games because if it had been up to us, we would have had every game. Right. We would have just bought every game we saw, right? For but, sure. Um, to kind of have the best of both worlds, we got to play a lot of games by mm-hmm. renting games. Definitely. And there's games that... That I still remember, like, uh, you know, if I'm looking through my ROMs library or something, I'll be like, holy crap, I remember renting that game. You yeah. know, like, uh, it's crazy. These I used to rent the original Dynasty Warriors. Like, I did it more than once. Oh, yeah, they were definitely... And now I don't even like those Warriors games, but I did back in the day. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. So, But renting isn't dead. You can still rent games, and it can still be a really cheap way to game. Um, the most popular way to do this is... Definitely Gamefly. Mm-hmm. And Gamefly, as you probably know, and as we've talked about in the past, and yep. just on our last segment just a second ago, mm-hmm. we talked about this, but it is a service where you, it's kind of like old school Netflix, where they ship you a little envelope that has the disc or the cartridge or whatever. And then when you're done playing it, you send it back. And this is for like a monthly fee. Yep. I mean, it works great. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they have a nice app. You can queue up what games you want in what order. Uh, they send them out pretty quick. No complaints. No, it really works quite well, and it's, and it's also very affordable. They're, uh, they have tiered things depending on how many games you want, mm-hmm. you know, at, at a time. 
Um, they have different tiers, but their cheapest tier is around $8 a month. I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. And with that $8, I'm going to guess if you, now that I've spent some time with Gamefly and know if you play a game and let's say you play one game a week uh, and you can like get through a game, I'm going to guess that in a month you probably won't be able to get like four games done. You probably won't be able to do, but probably three if you really made it work if yeah. you really like prioritize think about how much it. value that is three games yeah. for eight dollars i mean that's that's yeah, I mean, killer yeah if you think about like how much it would have cost to buy those games new it's especially great value that's what i'm saying yeah so and like we said we did a whole entire episode about gamefly and about all breaking down the different tiers and the price level so if you're interested in knowing more about it that's definitely a great resource mm-hmm now let's talk about everybody's favorite way to rent games, Randy. What's that? Redbox. Redbox. You ever rented a game from Redbox? One time. One was time. It fun? Uh, I I I don't even remember what game it was that I rented. It was I was at my our local Kroger, mm -hmm. and um, it was I think it was a, a PlayStation game, and it was like back when I. Had, started getting back into like the ps4 era mm. and i just like went by and i was like "Ooh, i want to try that game and it was like a dollar no maybe it wasn't a dollar per night maybe it was a little more expensive than that but it was around a dollar per night and i rented it for a couple nights i don't even remember what game it was it was years mm. ago well i've never rented anything from a red box well we might have rented a movie from a red box once on like a road trip we did but yeah. uh i That's think I, I think i was concussed so I'm not sure that I have the best recollection of that. But lots of, if you have a red box in your area, <clears throat> lots of them have games. Yeah. And they have a lot of the newer games too. And I think a lot of people think red box is just movies. Yeah. That's what I think about it being, uh, honestly. But I yeah. mean, maybe, if, you know, if you get a good value on a game you want to play, cool. And some people still have like mom and pop uh, video rental and they may have games. So we do. As a matter of fact. Do they still have games, though? I haven't been in there in like 15 years. Yeah. I so. went in there maybe like a few years ago, and they definitely still have movies. <laughs> but I don't know. I didn't look for video games when I was there. We should do like a like a gaming gig live stream where we go visit... Our local, yeah. our local video rental store. This would be a blast from the past to go <laughs> in that place. I mean, because they really mm. are gone. I mean, no one has these. Yeah. They used to be everywhere. And it's the same place that we rented games as a kid. Like, it hasn't even moved. I bet they do have video games. Probably. We should totally do it. That would be hilarious. Let's do it. They, they might kick us out. Like, they might not let us film. Like, I, I don't have the, uh, I don't know that they'd be the friendliest or most receptive, but I say we try it. Yeah, well, let's do it. But look for that. Yeah, wait for that one. <laughs> but back to the topic in hand, in terms of like gaming on a budget, renting, if you are okay with dealing with the mail, uh, Gamefly is a really great way to game on a budget. And one of the biggest pros for using something like Gamefly is that you get, you can play games when they're new. You know, mm -hmm. you have basically every game to pick from. So it's really just depending on what, what games do you want to play? Those yeah. are the games that you're going to be able to rent. Yeah, there's really no FOMO to worry about. The only thing you have to do is prioritize. Yeah. I mean, that's really it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that there are still some cons to renting, you know. Yeah. And that would be like, you don't get to keep the game. Mm -hmm. You got to send it back. Right. And of course, like we've mentioned, you can keep it with Gamefly. But again, that's not renting. That's not renting. Yeah. At that point, you're just buying a used game. Yeah. But if you're just purely renting mm -hmm. and just sticking to that base price and just cycling the games you know it, it does hurt a little bit to send back a game that you really liked yeah because you want to keep it yeah that's so. what i did with kirby i couldn't i couldn't put it in the mailbox <laughs> you're like i can't send you back <laughs> i'm keeping you uh, <clears throat> so you know this is definitely not an option for someone who like it wants to collect games renting is not going to be for you but if you don't mind using it and then sending it back like if you don't mind the fact that you're not going to have it you know in your collection anymore, this is probably the best way to game on a budget. I mean, there's cheaper ways, and we'll talk about those in future segments, mm -hmm. but renting is probably like one of the most convenient ways to play brand new games and to play a, a bunch of different games. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, the final way that we're going to talk about gaming on a budget for this episode is the plethora of subscription services that we have at our disposal. 
Yes. And I know we both have some opinions on that. Yeah, so there are lots of options for gaming on a budget, but it seems like the way that the gaming industry wants you to do it is this subscription service model that's been created. Things like Game Pass, yep. PlayStation Plus, Preach. Nintendo Switch Online. Yep, yep. That's the way that uh, all these big, you know, all the console manufacturers have it now. Mm-hmm. And that's the way they want you to game on a budget. Yep. That's their solution. That is their solution. They, uh, they, they just want your money and they don't care how many games you're playing while they get it. You know, they're, they're saying that, that they're banking on the fact that you'll just stay subscribed and that they'll make more money in the long run. Right. Basically. Now, I have to say, it. I am <clears throat> just like inherently dubious of any, you are super dubious. I'm very dubious of if a company really wants me to sign up for something, it makes me like think like, is this really a good value? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I can say that with subscription services, as long as you use them mm-hmm. and you don't just like forget that you're subscribed to it yeah. and keep paying it, I really do think they can be mm-hmm. a really economical way to game. Yeah, I mean, for a long time, I said that Xbox Live or uh, sorry, Xbox Game Pass was the best value in gaming, and it is an amazing value, and um, I loved it for a long time. But then eventually, I think we both just kind of realized all we were doing was playing Sea of Thieves. Yeah, we realized that we were paying like uh, fifteen dollars a month because we were paying for Game Pass Ultimate, and the only game we were playing on there was Sea of Thieves. Yeah, and so- we had we could have just bought Sea of Thieves. Like many times over. Right, which is what we eventually did. And now neither one of us are Game Pass subscribers, which is pretty crazy. But that doesn't mean that just because we don't do it anymore, you know, that doesn't mean that it can't be a a way to game on a budget. Because I think oh, it can. And it's a great way to like immediately have a large library of, of really great games. Honestly. Right. If you use it and you really think that you will play a bunch of different games and you like the games that are on these various subscription services, you know, I would say definitely look at the list of games first. Yeah. You know, because you might you might get into it and realize, you know, hey, I think that there's gonna be a lot of games. You get in there and there may be only a couple. Right. And you also might want to check if you're gonna get day one releases. Yeah. Because uh, Game Pass does that, but not all of them do. Yes, exactly. And like we said, there is Game Pass, there is PlayStation Plus, Nintendo mm-hmm. Switch Online, and Stadia Pro. Stadia uh, Pro. Yeah, we also talked about Stadia Pro in a recent episode. So if you want to know more about Stadia Pro and what types of games are there, check that out. You know, I actually meant to tell you, um, guess guess what I've been playing on Stadia Pro lately? What? You've been playing something on Stadia Pro? No, because there's nothing to play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're gonna. You're just trying to uh, drum up the drama here, Daniel. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've honestly been holding on to that joke like since we talked about Stadia Pro, and it just. I apologize. <laughs> but so, if you see a list of games and you think I do like a lot of the games that are on there, I think it can be a really great way to try out those games. One of the things I would advise <clears throat> against is if you've pl- once you've played through those games, only keep the subscription service if you feel like there are still more games to play or you think there are some coming because once yeah once those games that you wanted to play are gone the service has no value anymore so mm-hmm. unsubscribe and wait until they put more games in that you're excited about yeah don't be scared to unsubscribe i was kind of scared to unsubscribe from game pass just because it was like a security blanket i'd had forever yeah but the thing is you can always they're not yeah. going to stop you from resubscribing yeah i know i know you know they're not going to be like well if you unsubscribe you can't come back that's yeah. not the case you can always Take a few months off, and if a game comes in that you want to play day one, and you think um, it's only going to take me less than a month to play this game, I could subscribe for ten bucks, yeah, and then play it. And then when I'm done, you know, at the end of the month, unsubscribe again. That's a really economical way to play that game. That is, and there might be some other games you want to play too. No um, and Game Pass is pretty cool. Any pros that you can think of, like you know, another pro for these kind of subscription services. Anything that you that comes to your mind? Well, uh, I, for a while, was of the all-digital future mindset. You know that. Right. And uh, I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that it's been tempting again. Um, tempting to go all-digital. It's been tempting to dip my toe back into the digital realm just because it's so convenient. It really is. So that's one thing that these services offer is, is a lot of convenience. And, yeah. and, you know, I've been going back and forth between the OLED and the Switch Lite. Mm-hmm. And that's when it would be so convenient. Right. Because then you don't have to have a cartridge that you right. deal with. Which is like such that. a first world problem. Right. But still, it, it 
there's a fact there, and that is more convenient to have games that are just purely digital. You don't have to worry about discs. Mm -hmm. If you want to install or uninstall, it's super quick and easy. I mean, yep. Switching games is seamless. You know, they're all there. You don't have to get up to put a disc in. First world problem again. (laughs) But yeah, it is super convenient. Uh, But there are also some reasons that you might not want to go to the subscription service. Like we've kind of talked about. The the pool of games that you have is not your choice. Mm -hmm. It's based on what this company can offer you. And, you know, that is limiting. Mm -hmm. You know, even if at first it seems like there's so much there that you might want to play, eventually you're going to work through the games that you're excited about. And even if there are hundreds of games, if there's only a couple that you really want to play, once you're done, unsubscribe. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what kind of is going to make you sad is once you unsubscribe, you don't have those games anymore. (laughs) Right. You don't get to keep the games. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you never keep any of them. Even if you stayed subscribed forever, a lot of those games are going to eventually go away. That's true. And even if you buy it digitally, you can make the argument that you still don't own it. Yeah. forever so yeah so and that's a discussion that we've are we've had plenty of times but still i do think that despite me being a little bit apprehensive about it i do think that subscription services can be a great way to game on a budget for sure for yeah. sure so daniel i have a question for you you've already looked i think but I haven't what looked. do you you haven't looked what is what do you think is the most uh, like popular way that people say that they game on a budget. Hmm. I'll well, get, you've already looked. This isn't. You've already cheated. I have not looked. You know what? We're just gonna go to the poll. So, the most popular way that people say they game on a budget surprises me, uh, because if I had to guess, they would say waiting for sales. But if I had to guess without having already looked at the poll, I would say subscription services. Yeah, you would think that. Was that confusing enough? That was confusing to me. Okay, so. I already looked at the poll. I was lying. I was surprised to see that 67% of people said they just wait for sales. What I expected is for most people to be like, oh, I've got Game Pass. Right. That's we, what I expected. So we gave this poll and they had the options of wait for sales, buy used games, a subscription service like Game Pass, rent games, or some other way. And uh, there are other ways. But... I am also surprised that most people said wait for sales because that's the least economical way to do it. Mm, Yeah, that's true. And you're also just leaving it up to fate. You may never get the sale you're looking for and never be able to play that game. Right. And the, but I guess I should say that the reason that most people choose this is probably because they want to buy a new game. Probably. And they don't want to use copy. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I definitely see the, that side of it. As a collector. And I definitely think that, and maybe it's just also the most obvious way. Like you just wait for it to go on sale. Like, yeah, I really thought everybody would, would vote subscription service because it's just so prevalent now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you really don't overthink it or overanalyze, maybe perhaps your underutilization of the service, you might think you're getting a good deal. That's what I'm kind of, kind of getting at. Because subscription services can be a really great way to game on a budget if you're smart about it. Yes. But waiting for a sale is, it's a way to get the game cheaper, but I don't think it's the best way to game on a budget. But that's the way people, that's what people do. Yeah. You know? People aren't always as smart with their money as I, I try to be, which I have to say, when I buy a brand new game, I don't feel like I'm being very smart with my money. Well, when Randy buys a brand new game, he doesn't eat for three days. I mean, yeah, just to offset it. Yeah, he offset the cost. You know, occasionally, like if he's in somebody's car and they've got an old granola bar or something, like he might accept it. Right. But it's pretty much water for three days. I actually go outside and I uh, just open my mouth and I wait for flies to land in and I eat mm. them for, you know, protein. Free food, guys. Are flies your preferred? Anything that lands in there, man. Like a wasp. <laughs> Just anything. A pile of bird poop. Yeah. Any, anything that lands in my mouth, <laughs> I just chew it up. Any, anything that lands in your mouth, you just chew it up. Mm-hmm. And then what? <laughs> and that's how I eat. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> we had some comments that's on this poll about people's ways that they like to game on a budget. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and uh, Spencer Walker, Spencer Walker 21, mm-hmm. said the steam summer and winter sales. Yeah, and I and I do remember, um, you know, the last time that came around on Steam, I, I certainly looked through it. I didn't buy anything, but yeah, I always hear people talk about these as being like the holy grail of sales, mm-hmm. and I do think that there are probably some really great deals. I personally don't do it a whole lot. I have bought a couple games on the Steam sales, mm-hmm. um, but only like ones that were like dirt cheap, like a dollar or something. Yeah. Other than that, I don't really like buying digital games very much. I'm a collector. I like physical games, so it's just not for me. But for well, if you like digital games, I say it's probably awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know that I can really speak to this honestly, just because I haven't been PC gaming long enough to like see these come and go mm-hmm. a lot of times, you know. So, yeah, you know, I got no problem buying games on Steam. So maybe I'll take advantage of a yeah. summer winter sale mm-hmm. one of these days. But anyway, we got us another comment from Tox Cuffing. Interesting name. Tox Cuffing. Tox Cuffing. Uh, he's, he's a man, they, he, she, I don't know, is a, a person of few words. They say indie games. Indie games. And I wanted to talk about this comment because this is something that we, in all our segments of talking about the ways to game on a budget, one thing we have not talked about at all is just the fact that indie games are cheaper than your AAA games. That's true. And, and sometimes... Just as good, if not better. So, right. Just because it's an indie game doesn't mean that it's going to be of lower quality. In fact, mm-hmm. you know, there are indie games that are amazing. Yeah. I'll, I've played a lot of indie games that I that I absolutely love and that stuck with me just as much as any other game. Hades, of course, comes to mind. But yeah, we just finished Kane and Bridge of Spirits. That was a great indie game. Yeah. I, I don't think that relying exclusively on indie games is a, is a very, like, super realistic way to game on a budget but uh well it's a little it's, limiting it, yeah it's super limiting because yeah. you're saying like i'm only going to play these cheap games from indie developers and if you're really love those games i'm sure there are a lot i'm sure there's plenty of games that'll keep you definitely like occupied and you would love and you'd probably find tons of hidden gems mm-hmm. but at the same time you know like most people myself certainly included I like to play some of the big AAA games that are coming out, and I would hate to miss out on those because I was limiting myself to only playing indie games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Eventually, i got to play Smash Bros., you know? Right. Yeah. Smash Bros. is not an indie game. Heck no. no. <laughs> but still, it is a, it's a great option. If you're really into indies, I mean, why not just embrace it and say, hey, look, they're cheaper anyway. That's right. I've got some indie games in my Steam library, as a matter of fact, that are waiting on me right now. Yeah. And the last comment uh, about, you know, Gaming on a budget is from Sleria Rose. Thank you for commenting as always. You are you are a mainstay of our poll comments. And the comment says, a mixture of sales and selective purchasing. Especially over time, I've become a lot more picky about what games I play and recognizing games that I would be happier waiting on a sale for. Yeah. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. So like just being knowing like, hey, this is a game that I should probably wait. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, you know, and just get it when it's on sale. Yeah, just be selective, you know. I mean, I, I totally see that. Yeah, I mean, if you're cool with being like, I'm only going to wait and find out once, like, the dust is settled and find out what games are really worth playing and only play those games, Yeah, you're you're probably going to be a lot better off than a lot of us. Yeah, just wait and play what Jake Baldino tells you to play. That's what I say. That's a great option, except for Jake loves so many games. He's, <laughs> I love Jake Baldino, as you guys probably know, is a, a YouTube gamer guy, and he works on the Game Ranks uh, channel, but he also has his own channel. And he's a man. He's awesome, but he is he loves so many games. Yeah. So if you follow just what Jake's, if you but he honestly loves them. Yeah. Like I can tell. Like yeah. That's why I like him so. But much. if you buy every game that Jake loves, you're gonna be buying a lot of games. That's true. That is true. Yeah. But he's he's definitely his before you buy videos on game ranks are just phenomenal. Yes. So if you I love if those. you want to find out what a game is like before buying it, that is the definitive way to do it, in my opinion. I would watch it before I buy after I had already bought. Oh, I have. That's how good they are. I have done it plenty of times. <laughs> uh, you know. All right. Well, Randy, this brings us to our final segment here, which is going to be a little different this time right now. Yeah. Our games of the, our game of the week segment. Yeah, normally we would tell you what we've been playing, but instead we're going to tell you about one thing we've been playing, which is a lot of love. Yeah, this week 
Live Alive came out for us. Mm -hmm. uh, when we published this, Live right. Alive will have been out for a while. Yeah, it came out for Japan in 1994, but it came out <laughs> last week for us, this week for us. Yeah, and uh, this week I've basically just been all in on Live Alive. Me too, yeah. any Basically, if I've been playing a game, it's been Live Alive unless I was streaming. Um, it's... I, I was very cautious. I didn't... I saw the previews or the trailers and thought... It looks interesting. I want to play it, but I, I thought there's a good chance that I may just not like it at all. Mm -hmm. One, because it's turn-based combat. I'm not super into that. Um, two, it's an old, you know, JRPG. Also, not so yeah. sure I'm hot on those. But I have to say, I love this game. Right. I mean, it. It. I, I was excited from the time I saw it, just because of uh, you know some of the things you mentioned. Like it's a JRPG from the SNES era. Like, when you think about that, you think about some pretty meaty, like, yeah. grindy, like, you really got to be into it kind of games. Not my cup of tea, usually, at all. Yeah, and I, and I, like, I could love those games, but I just don't really have the time for that. So, when I saw that it was, like, segmented up into different chapters of smaller stories, I was like, oh, my God, it's bite-sizable. I can just play a chapter, like, at night, finish it, you know, start it and finish it in the same night. Like, that's for me, and yeah. it is. It's, I, it's, I really like it. It's way less intimidating than all those other games that it makes me think about. And I love it. Mm -hmm. And I think that if it had been like, cause it's not a short game. Yeah. Like to play through all the chapters, I I'm well over 10 hours in and I haven't finished it yet, mm -hmm. but I'm really close to being done with it. And if I had, if you told me, Hey, I've got this, you know, old RPG from the nineties that was Japan only. And it's going to take you, you know, over 10 hours to finish. Even just that, I would be like, eh, turn-based combat, pixel art. I'm, I'm not so sure I would want to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, speaking of the pixel art, you know, it's in the HD 2G, 2D, or HD 2D style, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like Octopath and Triangle Strategy. And um, honestly, I think this game looks better than those other two. I think they've like really got it going on in this game. I haven't played those other two games to compare, but... I do think it looks really, really good. Yes. Some of the environments, like with the depth effect that they've got going on and the sprites in the foreground, and uh, I mean, it, it looks so good. Yeah. Um, it, it is one of the best looking, like, uh, pixel art styled games I've ever seen. And it's not just pixel art because it's, right. uh, it's got this, like, their HD 2D. It kind of mixes mm -hmm. some, like, what are almost like halfway between 3D and 2D assets. It's really cool. It is really cool. Uh, it looks phenomenal. I mean, the colors, oh, especially if you're playing on a, a, a on OLED, OLED switch. Yeah. Man. Or if, an OLED TV if you have one of those. We don't. Man, I'd like that. I know I would too. <laughs> They're so expensive. <laughs> but a really good, like, big OLED TV, man. But the Switch OLED, this game looks so good on it. So good. It, that's, that's the main way I've played it. I've played it either... On the OLED or on the Switch Lite, but I haven't played it on the TV at all, actually. I've played it all handheld. It's a great game to play handheld. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know about it, it's got all these different chapters. Yes. And each chapter takes place at a specific period of time in history. Yes. Or in the future. Right. Which is really cool. So there's like Wild West, there's Imperial China, there's you know present day, in the future, all kinds of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And each one has its own story and sometimes even its own mechanics. Yeah. It seems like they all kind of have a gimmick. Um, yeah. For the most part. Of some sort. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they have an overarching shared combat system. Yes. But then they add extra things with, for each chapter and mm -hmm. they, it's, it's really neat. And it's just, you know, they're, they're, they bring over a ton of, you know, standard RPG elements. Like you have a party in most of them where mm -hmm. you've got companions with you and, you get equipment and you level up and all that. It's just way shorter. Yeah, which makes for me just the fact that I'm not going to have to spend, you know, forever grinding on this thing. Yeah. I think that it really is. It's immediately gone to one of my favorite games I played this year. Yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, it's, play it. I was very you know a little worried that I wouldn't like it, so I rented it through GameFly and. I got, I think, two chapters in, and I already hit keep on Gamefly because I'm like, nope, I'm not sending this back. Nice, love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good. That was a good. Uh, the good call. Yeah. It, so if you want to try Live Alive, I would definitely recommend it. If you've mm -hmm. already played it, I'm sure you like it. So let us know what you think about it either way. Whether you're gonna try it, you might wait on it, or you know. Totes. 
just let us know. All right. Well, that was a, a big meaty podcast, but we have more. Yeah. We have more tips on how to game on a budget. So we're actually going to be doing a whole separate podcast um, that we're going to cover some maybe less obvious ways to game on a budget. So look out for that. We're going to get deep in the weeds, people. Yeah. All right, guys. Until next time, I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. And this has been Gaming Gig. Peace out.